I want to come to act activism on Unilever as well, since right. we're talking activism here with, uh, with Kohl's. Uh, share what I can tell you in terms of the potential interest from Tryon, obviously one of the bigger activists out there that we've talked about for many years, both in good times and bad. P&G, real success. GE, not so much for Tryon, for example. The Journal and the FT actually was the first to report that they have a, a, uh, an interest here. Um, I can tell you a few things. Um, we talked a lot about Unilever last week, guys, because, of course, of that uh, three times that they'd made a bid to buy Glaxo's consumer health care business that is being spun off and were rejected. And the fact that their own shareholders seem to be in opposition to that yeah. bid and the uh, price that kept going up, although now they've stopped uh, raising that price. Um, but this was unexpected in some way. Let me tell you what I know, which is there have been no conversations that have taken place between Unilever and Tryan. Uh, Tryan, for its part, by the way, has declined all comment. Uh, but it is my understanding that there have been no conversations about this investment that conceivably Tryon has in Unilever, what it is that they might want, whether or not they actually are going to be a threat to the current CEO in right. some way or potentially try to push for change. The only meeting that did take place, Jim, between uh, Nelson Peltz, of course, uh, at Tryon and Mr. Uh, uh, is it Joe P? How do you pronounce his name? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure either. The CEO of Unilever. Actually, it was in September, is my understanding, and it was September. took place at Claridge's in London, from what I hear. Well, I love that. And place. you know, it was about the Ben and Jerry's boycott in the West Bank. Uh, really? Mr. Peltz had great concerns about that. I think the Israeli government perhaps asked him to see if he could intervene positively to have them lift that boycott, uh, where they won't sell Ben and Jerry's in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Uh, and so the only meeting that took place that I'm aware of, at least it, between Unilever's management and Peltz was that. And it was solely focused on that issue. By the way, at the time, it's my understanding there may not have been any position whatsoever that, uh, that Tryon had. Uh, didn't succeed, by the way, in getting right. them to lift that boycott, which I believe remains in effect. So we'll see where, what, and if anything, develops here um, in this story. Uh, obviously, again, following on last week with Unilever saying, finally, we're not going to raise our bid any right. longer for Glaxo's Healthcare business, health, uh, consumer healthcare business that Glaxo doesn't want to sell to us, but that's the meeting that took place. We can tell you at least. At this well, point. I'll tell you what's interesting here: the irony. David, do you remember uh, when Nelson fought a proxy fight, got on the board of, of, of Procter? Yes, Pete, a lot of yes. his ideas were carried out, and a lot of, if you look at that last quarter, what's incredible is that Procter is crushing Unilever overseas. Now, that wasn't necessarily Nelson, but he, he, a lot of his reorganization made it divisions much more aggressive. So Proctor crushes Unilever, which had been crushing Proctor over the period, say, of 2010 to 2015. Now, now maybe he <laughs> makes Unilever more competitive against Proctor. I mean, it really is. It's a case of a, yeah. a coach going from one team that he was uh, to another. Uh, Unilever has been in an interesting place. You had Pullman, obviously, the focus on ESG. Some of their shareholders unhappy with that, perhaps right. over, over reliance on, on what ESG. What do you make about the fact that the Glaxo? Was, there was a moment where Glaxo had everything. They had the big Unilever bid. They were doing fine. Unilever's people got hurt. Now I don't think. Do you think there's any coincidence that Procter, that Unilever suddenly, yeah, Nelson's off Procter. That he suddenly serves as a Unilever right after Unilever screws up? It's an interesting time. But again, I'm not aware that there are any real conversations about what they're up to at Tryon. Sometimes they take positions and then they sell them. Sometimes they follow through. Sometimes they're a passive investor. So I, I say we wait and see what develops.